So let's look at accounting for stock options again. And what happens if we do have an unexpected turnover in employees, um, which causes a forfeiture of some of those stock options? So we're back on exercise two here in our actual problems. Again, we skipped over and did three first because it shows a sort of a full example. So let's look at exercise two. On January 1st, 2018, Adams Minicky Corporation granted 15 million incentive stock options to division managers, each permitting holders to purchase one share of the company's $1 par value common shares within the next six years, but not before December 31st of 2020, the vesting date. So again, we have to work all of 18, 19, and all of 20. So that's again, a three year vest. I don't know why they like that date, but they do. The exercise price is the market price of the shares on the grant date of grant, currently $50 per share. The fair value of the options estimated by an appropriate option pricing model is $5 per share. Again, we're not gonna look at how they calculate that five. That is given to us. Management's policy is to estimate forfeitures. No forfeitures are anticipated as of 2018. Ignore taxes. So again, we're not worried about payroll taxes at this point. We're just trying to grasp the concept of how to deal with our actual stock options. All right. So what do we need to do first? Well, just like before, we find our total compensation expense. So we're granting 15 million shares. Let's just highlight that. So we're going to take that 15 and we're going to multiply it not by the change in price here, but by the actual option price. And that's based on that option model. So 15 times five, that's going to give us a total compensation expense of 75 million. Okay. Now keep in mind that is not all at once. That is over a period of time. So we're working our way up. So we need to take that 75 and then divide it by the period. So we're going to equal 75 and we're going to divide that by three because that's the vesting window is three years. So when we do that, we get 25 per year. That one's easy to divide out. So what are we going to record in December of 2018? Again, nothing on January 1st, the grant date. December 31st, we would. Before we produce financials, we would need to do that annual accrual. You could do it monthly if you wanted to. Just divide it by 12 and do an entry every month if you want sort of enter your financial statements. But keep in mind, we have to at least create one yearly or one annual report. So let's go in and hit compensation expense just like before. And that's going to be for the 25. That's the expense to our company, to our employees. And then what do we hit? Well, we're not paying it out in cash. We're not yet giving out shares of stock. So what do we hit? Well, we hit our paid in capital for our stock options. Again, pick is paid in capital and specifically for stock options of 25. So just like before, we're getting started here. Very similar to RSUs, except we're not going to give out shares unless they exercise the option where we actually receive cash. So moving on, number three, unexpected turnover during 2019 caused an estimated forfeiture of 10% of the stock options. So when that employee left our company, they're forfeiting that right because they're within that vesting window. They haven't been vested yet. So 10% of that is being lost. Determine the adjusted compensation expense or cost and then prepare the appropriate journal entries for 2019 and 20. Now, I wish I really could draw because I prefer T-accounts at this stage of the game, but there's a few things that we can think about. First and foremost, we started off with $75 million in total compensation. So we're forfeiting 10% of that. So in other words, our employees are giving up, this one that left, $7.5 million in stock options. So that's going to bring our total compensation down. We're going to take that $75 minus that $7.5 that's going to bring the total value of our compensation down just a bit. So what we're going to do, subtract that out, what do we get? We get 67.5 million. That's the new compensation rate of our company. Now, or for the stock option, excuse me, not of our company. We have other employees as well, but that's just for this stock option, the 67.5 uh, in total. Now, how many years as of December 31st would have of 2019 would have passed? Well, it's three years in total, so we're going to divide that by three. Divided by three gives us 22.5 per year. That's what we should have. Okay, now how many years are passed? Well, at this point, two years have passed. So 22.5 times two gives us 45 million. That's the total amount 
as of 2019. So as of the end of 2019, we need to have in that total comp account 45 million. Well, how much have we already put in there? Well, remember at the end of 2018, we put in 25. We need 45, so we're gonna go in and we're gonna say, let's just go down to the next line. We're gonna do 45 million minus the 25 that we've already accrued. So for this year, we simply need to do 20 million. What that will do is pull us up to the 45 million total comp as of the second year, okay? So you can divide by three times two, or you can simply multiply by two thirds, same answer there, but anyway. So in this year, when we go in, when we have that forfeiture, we're gonna hit our compensation expense. This is going to be the adjusted amount to pull up our compensation expense over the two year period to that 45, which is what it should be, assuming a total compensation of 67.5. Well, what do we offset with? Of course, it's going to be our pick account for our stock options. So we're gonna go in for our 20. In theory, these are employees are working, so they're paying in to earn this compensation. So it's going to become part of equity. We're moving it from retained earnings into equity, in theory. Now, what are we gonna do at 2020? Well, no more, uh, Forfeitures occurred during that last year, so we're going to hit a compensation expense. Here we need that one third that's left. Notice 67.5 minus 45, that means there's 22.5. That's what the amount would have been had we equally divided it over three years. 25.5 for this year. And then, of course, we're going to hit our pick for our stock options. So when there's that little forfeiture there, it's not too big of a deal. You just have to account or find the new total compensation, divide that over the number of years, and then come up with how much has been earned at this point. And that's how much the adjustment is for. All right, so again, that's just an example of what happens if we have a forfeiture. It doesn't give us any additional information on how many were exercised later, but then the, exercise, uh, the entry for the exercise of options would be just like what we did in the last video, all right? So when there's that forfeiture, all you need to do is come up with your new compensation expense for the total, divide that over the vesting period. That'll give you the price per year had we taken into account the forfeitures to start with. Multiply it by wherever you are in the vesting period. We're in year two here, so two years needs to have been accrued as of 2019. That'll tell you the total amount of comp that you should have in the compensation expense over the two year period of 45 million. So how much did I need to get there? I needed 20 more. So 25 plus 20 gives me my 45, leaving me that last third at 22.5 in the final year. All right, I hope that helps clarify any forfeitures on our stock options. Have a wonderful day.